The music for this week's episode of Game News Update was provided by YouTuber Motive Makes a Man. You can check out more of his stuff at motivemakesaman.com. Activision has just announced that the next game in the Guitar Hero franchise will be released in fall of 2015. The game's name is Guitar Hero Live. Guitar Hero Live has several interesting new features, including a brand new guitar controller with redesigned buttons, a first-person mode, and instead of a CGI crowd, they're replacing everything with real footage. When you play the game, in the background you'll either see a music video for the song, or you'll see a crowd of people that reacts in real time to your skill at the game. The news of the new controller is definitely something that left me pondering. According to the official press release and this image of it, it boasts two rows of free buttons by the top of the controller, which, according to them, better reflects the way people naturally play. And it's also supposedly easier to learn, but more difficult to master. There hasn't been anything announced about cost compatibility with this controller and the new Rock Band, but thus far it seems that this new controller will only rock with Guitar Hero Live. Also, the focus of the game seems to have shifted away from rock and roll, as was the case in the older Guitar Hero games. While there were some Guitar Hero spin-offs, ultimately it seems that it was the large number of spin-offs that sank the franchise in the end. So instead of releasing individual games with a focus on singular genres, Guitar Hero Live is going to put them all together. The bands announced thus far are The Black Keys, Fall Out Boy, My Chemical Romance, Gary Clark Jr., Green Day, Ed Sheeran, The War on Drugs, The Killers, Skrillex, The Rolling Stones, The Lumineers, Carrie Underwood, Pierce the Veil, and Blitzkids. There's a lot of people out there. Personally, I think the time has come for a new guitar hero. It's been a good long time, and I'm glad that the franchise got a bit of a rest for some years. However, I am a little bit concerned over the new controller. While it is meant to simplify things, which is cool, is it going to be a dumbing down of the game, or is it going to add an extra layer of realism, and is this layer of realism going to make the game better or worse? Well, that remains to be seen. Guitar Hero Live is going to hit the PS3, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox 360, and Wii U this fall. Additionally, it's going to come to select mobile devices. What this means exactly, I'm not sure of, however, they did mention that it's coming to different tablets and smartphones. There's no word yet, however, on which tablets and smartphones these are. If you've been on the hunt for a JRPG, well, I've got some very good news. Square Enix has just announced Star Ocean V, Integrity and Faithlessness. It's set on the planet of Fakereed, and the game is still in development. We don't have a trailer yet, but some images of the game were published in the Japanese gaming magazine Famitsu. If you're more in the mood for an adventure game, well, you might want to check out the trailer for Samurost 3. The Samurost series, by Amanita Design, is very trippy, but very pretty as well. It boasts a unique aesthetic which blends real-world objects, usually very small objects, and makes them look very big. The games have a spectacular and otherworldly feel to them. In case you've not heard of Amanita Design, they're also responsible for the puzzle adventure game Machinarium. In case you're a more old-school adventure game fan, the whole using real objects to craft in-game objects doesn't get used very often. The last time I saw it was in Doug Tenapple's The Neverhood. Actually, the last time I saw a point-and-click adventure game made with real-world materials, it was The Dream Machine, which is actually another really cool adventure game made with cardboard and clay. But I digress. You're going to want to check out Samurai's Free once it comes out. One interesting bit of news that reached me this week was that the first annual Silicon Valley Comic Con is set to take place from March 19th to the 20th, 2016. The announcement of this convention was made by both Stan Lee, of Marvel Comics fame, and Steve Wozniak, technologist and one of the founders of Apple. At this point in time, there are quite a few Comic Cons. Besides the big ones that are the New York Comic Con and San Diego Comic Con, at this point it seems like there's a con for every city. At some point, we're going to hit a critical mass of Comic-Cons that can be held throughout the world before the market just says, alright, that's enough Comic-Cons, and before you know it, only the big shows are getting attended. Then again, there's a wonderful chance that I'm terribly wrong, 
and that these Comic Cons are going to balance themselves out. On the chance that I am right about the oversaturation of Comic Cons, however, it'll be necessary for the Silicon Valley Comic Con to do something to distinguish itself in order to survive. According to the press release I received for the show, it will have a focus on the intersection of the arts and technology, so perhaps that might be enough to make a difference. I suppose we'll know by March of next year. Was. I knew you would. You know, you've done some of these, Stan. Do you have any advice for the team? There's only one thing you have to remember. This is of vital importance. You can write it down if you wish. The only thing I have to offer right now is, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> I thought you'd get a kick out of that. Anyway, I love the idea. Can't wait to see you. And until then, Excelsior. Awesome. Great talking to you. See you next year at Silicon Valley Comic Con. If you're a fan of strategy RPGs, think Fire Emblem, then you're going to want to take a look at Telepath Tactics. Telepath Tactics is a turn-based strategy RPG. It's currently out on Mac, PC, and Linux on Steam, and it boasts a multiplayer mode. It's on my to playlist, and I actually got to meet and interview the developer, Craig Stern, at PAX East a couple years ago. I've heard very good things about the game from people who like Fire Emblem and Final Fantasy Tactics. If you've ever wanted a strategy RPG in which you could ride around giant praying mantises, this is definitely your game. Another game that was released this week is Titan Souls. Now, Titan Souls isn't your average top-down Zelda-like. You see, in Titan Souls, you only have one weapon, that is, a single arrow that you have to retrieve every time you fire, and you're up against these creatures called Titans. These ancient stone monsters all have a single weak spot. Strike it with your single arrow, and you've beaten it. The thing is, these Titans are not easy to beat. The Legend of Zelda was a pretty clear influence on Titan Souls, However, unlike The Legend of Zelda, there are no minions to grind on. In fact, Titan Souls is made entirely out of boss battles. It also draws inspiration from Shadow of the Colossus, so if this sounds like your sort of game, you should definitely check it out on Steam. If you're not entirely sold on the concept, there is also a demo available for Titan Souls. If you've been looking for a stealth game, great news. Invisible Inc. now has a release date of May 12, 2015. Developed by Clay Entertainment, the studio behind Don't Starve and Mark of the Ninja, Invisible Inc. puts you in control of a team of secret agents on top secret missions. It's a bit like a cyberpunk XCOM with more of a stealth focus. Invisible Inc. is definitely high up on my playlist. I've heard good things about the game from the players, and I have to say that I really dig the game's aesthetic. While Invisible Inc. is coming to Mac, PC, and Linux on May 12th, the game is also coming to PS4, though we don't know quite when. If you're in need of a cyberpunk fix straight away, you'll be happy to know that the parkour game 404 Sight has just been released on Steam for free. What's great about 404 Sight is that it's about a very relevant issue in today's world, that is, net neutrality. The antagonists in the game are, surprise, big ISPs. 404 Sight was made by Retro Yeti Games, a team of graduate students currently enrolled at the Entertainment Arts and Engineering program at the University of Utah. Now, I tried to play the game, but unfortunately, I ran into a bit of a resolution issue and wasn't able to play the game properly. I told the developers about the glitch, and hopefully they're able to fix it. That said, the game is getting rave reviews on Steam right now. One that stood out to me was a user who compared the game to Mirror's Edge, but with the soundtrack of Hotline Miami. If 404 Sight sounds cool to you, then you should definitely check it out. It is free, after all. The most you stand to lose is a couple minutes of your time. We've got a bundle that will make you jump for joy. Introducing Humble Origin Bundle 2. If you've been looking for a good deal on video games and you also want to help charity, well, I have some very good news for you. The Humble Origin Bundle 2 has just been unveiled. You can pay what you want for Dragon Age Origins, Peggle, Dead Space 2, Medal of Honor Allied Assault War Chest, Command and Conquer Generals, and you can beat the average for Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare, Bejeweled Free, Dragon Age 2, Mass Effect 2, but not 1 for some reason, 
and there are more games to be released next week for those who beat the average. Frankly, it's a no-brainer to buy this. I mean, even though the title of the bundle is the Humble Origin Bundle 2, the only games that don't come with Steam keys are the games that aren't available on Steam. You are not forced to use EA's Origin service if you don't want to. Additionally, all the money from this bundle goes to charity. There are a few really good causes that you can choose from, so do yourself a favor and check this out at HumbleBundle.com right now. On the subject of Electronic Arts, the hotly anticipated new Star Wars Battlefront has just had a fresh trailer released at the Star Wars Celebration in Anaheim, California. We have a fresh load of details about this new game. For starters, it's a multiplayer-focused game, and according to the official Twitter account, there isn't going to be a traditional single-player story mode, so basically no campaign, and apparently there isn't any support for LAN play. You'll need an internet connection for any sort of multiplayer in Star Wars Battlefront. Apparently, that includes the couch co-op split-screen. I'll be honest, this is setting off a few alarm bells about DLC. Additionally, considering what happened last week with regard to NBA 2K14, I'm not too keen on games that depend on the internet right about now. It's one thing if an online-only game is free to play, but if you're paying for a copy of Star Wars Battlefront, which could go offline any year, well, that doesn't exactly instill confidence, especially considering that people are still playing the original Star Wars Battlefronts online many years after their releases. The game is set on four planets, Hoth, Tatooine, Endor, and the as of yet unexplored Sulist. Additionally, if you pre-order the game, you get to play the DLC, which contains two maps set on the planet Jakku, a full week, yay, before it's released to everybody else on December 8th. The new Star Wars Battlefront is set to be released on November 17, 2015, for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and for PC, exclusively on Origin, apparently. What do you think about the new Star Wars Battlefront? Are you excited about the new game made in the Frostbite engine? Or are you a bit concerned for the series? Follow us on Twitter and or Instagram at Blackman and Robin and tell us what you think. If we think that what you think is cool, we'll be sure to feature you on the next episode of Game News Update and we'll be sure to grace you with a Steam key for Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, a fantastic RPG that you should definitely have played at this point. I haven't played it at this point and I feel great shame over that. But you can play it in my honor, so remember, that's at Blackman and Robin. Just tell us what you think about the next Star Wars Battlefront. One strategy game that caught my eye recently is something called Lux Deluxe. It's coming to Steam on May 1st for PC, Mac, and Linux, and according to the developer, it's inspired by classic board games. Risk and Conquest are cited as big influences. While the game itself looks pretty simple, what really drew me in was the trailer, which is wonderfully, amazingly over the top. The only way the trailer could be any better is if it features a couple of beloved sitcom characters playing the game on a train. If you're after strategy in space and you're not really in the mood to download anything, the Homeworld Remastered Collection is coming to retail DVD on May 7, 2015. Ubisoft released a trailer that announces the <clears throat> sale of the game. Deep inside the ruin was a single stone that would change the course of our history forever. You may have heard of the prison-breaking game The Escapers. It was released a little while ago for the Xbox One and PC. Well, good news, the game is coming to the PlayStation 4. There is no set release date quite yet, the developers have just said that it's coming soon. However, the game has gotten very good reception on the PC and Xbox One, so we trust that the PS4 version will be good when it comes out. Speaking of games that have seen a lot of success, Cities Skylines has sold over 1 million copies. This city building game, which has filled in the little hole in the heart that the last SimCity left behind, has been getting fantastic reviews from both the press and players. Available on the Steam Workshop right now are jillions of mods available for this game. If you don't own it and you love city building games, do yourself a favor and get it ASAP. Another game that has sold over a million copies is Monster Hunter 4 for the 3DS. It's the first game in the series to sell that many games in Europe and North America, and Capcom is celebrating right about now. 
The game's gotten pretty good reception from the players, and while I don't own it, I did have the opportunity to play some of the demo. It's a pretty interesting game. You run around, fight monsters, and collect for parts. It's not nearly as gruesome as I'm making it sound. In fact, I'm pleasantly surprised that a 3D action game of the sort works so well on the 3DS. If you own a 3DS, but like me, you've not yet played the series, go ahead and try out the demo. Besides the fact that it's a lot of fun, it's one of the best looking games I've seen on the 3DS. Just a quick update on a well-loved game, Blizzard's Hearthstone, their digital card game, has come to iOS and Android. It's a free download, and it's a pretty interesting game. A lot of people are already playing the PC version, so if you own an iDevice or an Android phone, definitely check it out. Just as a quick heads up, there's now a demo available for Eisel. Eisel is a very ambitious game that's currently on Kickstarter. It's a procedurally generated 3D action-adventure RPG. If you'd like to try out this demo, you can get it direct from your Kickstarter page. To get to the Kickstarter page, you just go to eiselgame.com. Our final bit of game news regards a non-digital card game, specifically for Ion, a compound building game. The Kickstarter for Ion is currently live. It looks to be a very brainy project. Also, the Kickstarter video is hilarious and adorable. Take a look. She wanted something a bit more hands-on, so I let her loose in the chemistry laboratory. That's our kitchen. Hands-on chemistry can still be explosively fun, but doesn't have to be this dangerous. Here's the thing about the games I publish. They're vetted by both the gaming community and by educators. I don't want to publish a cruddy game, so it must stand alone on a gamer's table. And I don't want to publish a game with the same theme that a hundred other games have. We publish games about hard science topics that are scientifically accurate. And in this way, we give both gamers and educators a valuable resource. For gamers, something to geek out on over a science concept with their gaming group. And for educators, a more fun resource to use in their classroom with their students. Look, ION is about one of the most fundamental concepts in chemistry. How ions form some of the most common compounds that we use every day. Or in more sciencey terms, ionic bonding. Students spend upwards of two hours playing games almost every day. Why not put something a little more constructive in their hands? Well, that's it for this week's game news. Be sure to follow at Blackman and Robin on Twitter for all the latest game news, reviews, previews, and interviews. Be sure to follow me at Jordan underscore Cameron for my other views. My name is Ace Waters, and I am Motive Makes a Man. Put it simply, Motive Makes a Man is my one-man outlet for all the different musical things that I do. My music can vary greatly song to song, but almost everything I do has that electronic tinge to it. I really enjoy taking synthesized and organic instruments and hopefully creating a unique and interesting musical experience. So you've made it to my channel, you've watched some of my videos, and you've thought, man, this guy's pretty great. I wish I could interact with him more. Well, you can. I have a Facebook page and a Twitter, so feel free to request a song or talk to me about a new game or album or whatever. I also have a Bandcamp page with several albums worth of music you can download. I do everything as pay what you want, so if you're strapped for cash, please feel no guilt in downloading my entire collection. If you'd like to support, of course, you can do that as well. If you'd like to help out more, subscribing to my channel is one of the easiest ways you can do so. 
This helps YouTube to understand that I am a serious content creator, and it will get my videos to a wider audience. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy all that I do as Motive Makes a Man. I'm trying to do this video more serious, not not so goofy goof. Alright. <laughs> oh, it's gonna break down. Ah! It's really hard to look at the camera and not at myself, because I'm a narcissist.